but I grew up on the East Coast. When I was 17, I moved to North Carolina. I tell you this because that's where I met Chance. You guys will get to meet him in a few minutes. I went to college in Ohio where I majored in something that had absolutely nothing to do with computers. And when I graduated, I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I thought I wanted to find my way back out to Chicago, so I got a job as a sales rep at a cool company. I learned a lot that year. I learned how to sell, I learned about a new industry, but more importantly, I learned what I wanted and did not want out of a career. I did not like where I was at, and I just really wanted to do more meaningful work. And to do that, I thought I had to get a set of hard skills. This is my friend Max. I've known Max since I was six years old. He grew up down the street from me in Connecticut. Max is a freelance web developer and designer based out of Brooklyn. He came out to visit Chicago a couple of times last year, and I was absolutely fascinated with the work he did. He could send me a URL and say, I made this. People use this, and I thought that was fucking awesome. <laughs> I thought Max was on something. He does interesting work, and he works for himself. So I thought, hmm, maybe I'll get my, get my hands wet with some code. And I did this with some online tutorials when I was bored at work. Clearly, I love my job. <laughs> I figured out that I really enjoyed this, but I quickly got frustrated because I wasn't able to move at the pace I wanted to move. Coincidentally, my friend Chance down in North Carolina was also teaching himself how to code. And one day, he sent me a G-chat when I was at work. He said, check out this new thing called Starter School in Chicago. I said, Starter School? What's that? I've never heard of Starter School. <laughs> But he sent me the URL, and I went to the website, and I read the letter that Mike and Neil wrote. It was pasted right on the homepage. And that really got my attention. So on July 3rd last year, I played hooky from work, and I came here to 1871. And it's here that I met Neil. Neil showed me around. We sat down at the Intelligentsia, and he told me his grand visions for this program. I was a bit apprehensive because he admitted they had never done anything like this before. They didn't know what was going to happen. But he spoke with such enthusiasm and such conviction that I knew that the program was going to be a success, and I knew it was something I wanted to be a part of. So on September 10th, I quit my job. I wrote Mike and Neil a fat check. And I just took a leap of faith. Nine months later, we're at the end of the road. Starter school season one is done. And it's incredible to look back and think about everything that this class has learned and experienced and achieved. And now that it's the end of the program, people are asking us, all right, first round's done. Was it worth it? Was this program worth it? Absolutely. I came here for a set of hard skills, and I got them. I've got a long way to go, but I'm on my way. But more important than that is the people we got to meet. We got to meet some of the coolest people in Chicago. A lot of them are sitting here today. We, we were lucky enough to learn from these people. But the most invaluable thing I'll take away from Star School was learning how to learn. And that's absolutely critical no matter what you do. Jeff Cohn had 12 weeks to teach us back in development. And there's no way he's going to teach a whole classroom full of people how to be profession, proficient developers by the end of it. But his teaching style, forcing us to teach ourselves and teach each other, made us a class of learners. All right, so what did I do here? I came to start school. Unlike some people, I did not have a product in mind. But Neil continually told me to scratch my own itch. Look at your own life, find pain points, and figure out how technology can make those easier. This is my family. This is the Myers clan. As of last year, my parents are empty nesters, and the four kids are spread out across four different states. We flew home for Thanksgiving the Wednesday before last year, but none of us coordinated flight times. And so my dad spent 12 hours that day in Thanksgiving traffic, shuttling us back and forth from the airport. Understandably, he was upset, and I thought, hmm, Maybe I can do something about this. And so I dusted off my shiny new back end skills and I built what I called family room. <laughs> There's a private message board where we could share information that we didn't want getting lost in text and emails. Second quarter, Sandy Toss Design, user experience, Photoshop apparently. And it looked better, but it still lacked direction. And so third quarter came and Chance decided to jump on board the project and we started over from scratch. And we built this, and we were using it with our families, but we really didn't know what features to add to it. Should we add a calendar, video chat? I don't know. But Neil said, get it out there. Get people using it. And so that's what we did. We sent it out to a whole bunch of families. We had 25 families sign up. 
We realized that they would go, they'd post some pictures and messages, and never come back. And so, we sent out emails to all of our users and asked for feedback, asked what they wanted out of a product like this. And people kept pushing us in this direction of task management. Who's picking Bobby up from baseball practice? Who's getting groceries for dinner tonight? Chance and I talked about this, we realized it is a pain point, but we just don't really care about that. The part of the app that we did care about was this idea of preserving stories. My family has a wealth of information and experiences that I want to tap into. And so what is Family Room today? It's an app that's made to help you continue learning about your family members. It's pretty simple. It's an email service. We email you every week on a Monday. We ask you a fun, open-ended question designed to get you talking about things you guys would not normally talk about. We ask questions about posterity, like, what was your most memorable family vacation? What made it that way? And we ask more fun questions, like, if you had a month off and an open-ended plane ticket, where would you go? What would you do? People will respond directly to the email, and once the whole family's done that, we compile the answers and send it back. The idea is to learn one new thing about each of your family members each week. Is this something that's going to blow up and get widespread usage? I sure hope so. But a couple weeks ago, we sent out a question that said, if you could go back and revisit any time period in your life for one week, what would it be and why? And I got to read about my mom's summer trip when she was in college to Nairobi, Kenya. I got to learn about some of her best friends from college I'd never heard of. Heard about the bugs she ate, the tribe she met, the animals she encountered, and that made it all worth it. So what's next? What's after start of school? Chance and I believe in Family Room, we're going to keep going ahead with it, but I'm also looking for freelance work to practice my skill set, look for new challenges. Thanks everybody. <laughs>